Välkommen till Tro och under ifrån Mediemission International denna kväll. Ett nytt program har vi framför oss. Ett program med mycket information och en mycket uppmuntran till dig. Vi upplever ju en tid när vi lever under speciella omständigheter. Vi tror att det blir bättre framöver. Men trots corona och alla begränsningar så ser vi hur vårt arbete växer. Och i vårt förra program förra veckan så hade vi tema att Mediemission och IRR TV vi växlar upp. Vi tror nämligen att man ska inte bromsa sig ur en kurva utan man ska gasa sig ur en kurva. Därför tror vi att det bästa ligger framför. Vi vill återigen säga ifrån djupet av vårt hjärta att vi är så tacksamma över våra missionsvänner i Sverige. Vi säger det varje program och det är inte en slogan, det är inte mekaniskt utan det är från våra hjärtan. Därför att utan er hjälp och utan er support, era förebönor så skulle det här helt enkelt inte vara möjligt. Så ta emot vår tacksamhet och vi tror att tillsammans så ska vi få göra skillnad och betyda mycket för många de år som ligger framför. Vi tror att det kommer en tid efter corona. Men vi är egentligen inte beroende av omständigheterna som sätter begränsningar på hur mycket tro vi har på Gud. Utan det är vår tro på Gud som sätter begränsningar på hur mycket allting annat vill påverka oss. Och vi har en stor tro på Gud. Vi tror att mitt i detta så leder han oss igenom. Och när en dörr stängs, ja då öppnas minst två nya. Det har vi fått uppleva vårt arbete. I kväll, precis som vanligt, ska vi fokusera på ett speciellt område. och Vi har arbetat mycket i Indien och i Nepal. And tonight in the studio in the headquarters we have the founder and the director Hanna Hauka and also Kenneth Grönros. You are heartily welcome to this program tonight. Thank you. Thank you. It's always an honor to have you with us in the studio because you have so much information and you uh, are i mean you are the man who knows everything about what god is doing in our mission work right now uh, first of all we will talk about india and nepal but uh, hanno you recently just yes, today you received um, a mail from from usa yeah. <laughs> very very encouraging mail and you must you must uh, tell us what it's all about <clears throat> Thank you, Morgan. Uh, yes, we absolutely. I got this very, very interesting letter. Mm. But before I read it to you, it's not a big one, not a long one. Before I read it to you, I want to give you some background. You know, as you know, we've spoken so many times. We have what we call mega city uh, media campaigns, so store starts, uh, starts uh, media campaign, mm. and uh, that means that we go into a mega city, and the whole city is shaken, shaken for 30 days. With the message that God gives you the power to change, you don't need to live the life that you are living in, it's especially in a time when we have the coronavirus. You know, I think every city in the Western world and every city otherwise needs a message of hope. There is a God who can give you hope in the middle of your either hopelessness or in the situation that you are in. Okay, so that's the background. However, because there are so many cities, And we, as a ministry organi missions organization, we can only go to a certain amount of cities, uh, you know, before our <laughs> before our lives end. I mean, you know, there are, must be millions of cities, and so so I mean, we don't have time, and so we don't get to go everywhere. And people who listen to the to the, the presentation of these mega city campaigns, shaking a city, they say, "Hey, this is what we want. Come and shake our city too, mm -hmm. together with us." And uh, then they say, "Wait a minute." <clears throat> Uh, these people have a lineup of 30 countries, 30 cities. Uh, they will never get to us. Either Jesus will come before they come, <coughs> or else we will die before they get here. <laughs> and so, or they will die before they get here. So, I mean, so there has to be another solution, right? And so, because uh, because of this, this this letter is really good. It is. It comes from David Ogren. He doesn't speak English, but he's an American Swede. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, this is what he writes to me. He is our representative on the U.S. side. And, uh, and uh, he knows what mega cities are all about. So he was uh, traveling uh, in, inside the USA to these different churches in different cities, and this is what he found. He was in uh, the state of Missouri, in the city of, or the town of Marshall. And this is what he said. There's a group of pastors in this county, in this area, that means, 
they caught a vision to do whatever they could to replicate, which means to repeat, mm -hmm. our mega city media campaigns in their own region. They have done, number one, a mass mailing to every single home in their county, that is five times over five weeks. It's a postcard with a phone number, with the website and the message, experience the power of hope. Mm. And then the next one is they put the same message into the newspaper ads with uh, transformation stories from their area. They put the same on radio, advertisements on radio, plus interviews. And then they had 300 homes uh, in the USA. It's good because you have homes and you have yards. 300 homes and 300 yards, 300 signs, or mini billboards advertising the campaign. Television was not available in their area, but they are doing the testimonies, you know, uh, that we talked about. Then they said, we train people to handle the incoming phone calls uh, or the response so they can receive in the corona environment, receive the phone calls into their homes. And they are so excited because they have received more response than they have ever received from anything that they have ever done before. Mm -hmm. And they said they are planning on also a closing celebration. When I read this, I said, hey, every single place, every city and every town must do the same. You don't need to wait for people to come. We will advise you. We can come and counsel. We can give you, you know, the instruction how to do this. But you can do this by getting the churches in your area, in your town or your city together and just go for it. You don't need the million dollar budgets that we usually use in Mumbai or, or, in, uh, or in Calcutta or, in, or in, you know, in the big mega cities with 20 million people. You don't need all that money. These people are doing it with minimal funds and they're doing, giving it a huge push for the gospel that they have never seen with, with, with response they have never seen. You don't need to wait. You don't need to wait. You, you can do it now and we'll be there to help you. Wow. This, I mean, that, that mail really encouraged me as well because uh, this is the dream we want to see. And before we start to talk about India and Nepal, Kenneth, you are also the member in the Swedish board. And when you hear uh, Hanno read this about the possibilities, uh, what do you think about Sweden? <laughs> yeah, I, I think this is very much possible for, for Sweden. Uh, and I think many churches must uh, focus on uh, what we have in common, because sometimes uh, uh, it's have been so hard sometimes for churches to join hands locally. But I think when pastors mm -hmm. can see we have different dog, uh, doctrines or some uh, cultures and so on, but maybe we should join hands just to see the bigger picture, just to see the city, city mm -hmm. God called us in to be pastors and mm -hmm. say, this is what God wanted us first of all to do. Of course, we should be good shepherds and uh, care for our sheep, but we should first of all bring the message of hope. And I think mm. Corona has prepared the soil. Mm. And I believe where there are pastors with the vision, with the big picture, I think this can be possible in many, many places. And that can be a great, great blessing. Mm. Uh, I was also so, yeah. so, what should I say, touched by this. Mm. Uh, yeah. What you say, you don't need to make it so, so, expensive, so uh, complicated. Uh, when you love, you will be very good in finding good solutions. Mm. Uh, and now when we have been so skilled in doing YouTube uh, uh, programs, yeah. also locally, uh, I think there will, uh, I, we really uh, will send this challenge to all of us. I hope we mm. can do it the same in our own country. Mm. Now we have India and Nepal. Uh, I mean, in our mission work, we have been there, and um, both of you, Hanno and Kenneth, you have been so deep involved in India. And uh, first of all, Hanno, there is some really big cities in India, <laughs> if yes. compar comparing to Scandinavia. And uh, yes. we, we have been there. Yes, yeah, that is true. I mean, for example, Mumbai has the population. Oh. One city has two times the, the population of all of Sweden. Sweden has 10 million, maybe? Yes. Yeah, well, Mumbai was 20 million, one city, one city. And then you say, and when Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel, okay, in our generation, we are, 
we are, all of us are responsible for this generation. So we say to ourselves, how do we go and evangelize one city with a population of 20 million people when the church is, is not visible, it is not heard, and most people don't even know it's there? So how do you do it? You, the, the, you do it the same way the, the apostles did. You go by faith. Mm -hmm. uh, the, God, the, the Great Commission that Jesus gave us was specifically designed in a way that it demands the miracles of God. It is impossible to do what Jesus said unless God comes into the picture aside, beside you and does the miracles that you need to see happening. It does, it's not going to happen otherwise. In Mumbai, it was a perfect uh, example. We went to the city. And, you know, when you come from Scandinavia or the Nordic countries, you know, a few boys like us, you go and you, and you look at the city, 20 million people, and you go, oh, my goodness. You know, and, they, and, they, and this is the challenge, you know. Yeah. How do you reach 20 million people when you can't reach 1,000? And you say to yourself, God, you know, this is a place where miracles need to happen. Mm -hmm. So what happened? Mm -hmm. We know what we need to do. We need to, we need to uh, negotiate with the media companies to come up with a media package that would include all kinds of media, but we really didn't know what media would work the best <clears throat> and which is, you know, which is affordable. So God sends us two representatives from Mumbai Railways it's like Sveriges Jern Verket, I think, eh? Mm. Yeah, but then the Mumbai Railways. <clears throat> and so they come to us and they say, we heard that you have come to this city and that you would like to do this uh, media campaign for 30 days. And they said, well, we want to make an offer. These men were Hindus. They were not Christians. So we want to make an offer. I mean, we, we have a business to take care of, a business to run. So why don't you put your advertisements on the trains? We run all the trains. We have 9 million commuters, people commuting on the trains every single day mm. into the city and then in the evening out of the city. Put your advertisers, put the, the message of your campaign in every single train car on every single train. And he says, you have a captive audience for 9 million people. Mm. And for little boys like us from Scandinavia, from the Nordic countries, mm -hmm. <laughs> I said, Lord, <laughs> if you compare me to these men, I'm asleep and they're awake. Mm. I mean, they, they, they have more vision than I do because they know their city. But it was a miracle that God put them in front of us around a negotiating table, and they were making offers that we never even dreamed of. Mm. Nine million people exposed to the message every single day. Wow, how can that happen? And then, of course, the, the same thing happened with television. The same thing happened with the big daily newspapers, Hindu newspapers, uh, Hindi, Hindi newspapers, and so it, it, we saw miracle after miracle coming together. And then we needed a call center. We knew after doing uh, probably about 90 different campaigns in different places, we knew that the call center for Mumbai with 20 million people would have to be quite big because uh, there are so many people, you will be coming to them through the media. You're talking about you know millions and millions of people every single day, many times a day, coming up against, you know, the message. So we had a call center of, with 400 telephones, 400 telephones working 24-7. <clears throat> and I tell you, when the campaign finally started, we had also done the training. You have to train lots of volunteers. We trained 14,000 uh, volunteers from 1,700 churches that got involved. But the first day in the, in the campaign, when uh, the message was going out over the media. I saw in front of my eyes <clears throat> the 400 telephones light up. In other words, they started to ring. Mm. And they rang and they rang and they rang nonstop. And these 400 telephone operators, Christians, volunteers, they were answering the phones and they were taking down data because they didn't have time. The lineup was big. Every single phone had a lineup of maybe maybe dozens, maybe hundreds of people trying to call, so you don't have time to talk to them. You say, what's your name, your address, your phone number, and then you know, we'll deliver the, you know, the, the Power to Change book with the trans transformation stories to you. And so that was going on, and I looked at the, there was about 200 pastors in the call center, just out of curiosity. I mean, nobody really knew what to expect. They had never seen this in their lives, and they didn't, and many of them didn't even believe that there would be a response. And when they saw 400 phones, suddenly start to ring on the first day. And it, they just rang and they rang and they rang. Mm. And they said, this cannot be possible. This, can this be our city? Can these people be our people? We have tried to reach them for, 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 for years, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. 
and they never came to our churches. They don't even know who we are. And suddenly they're, they're, they're calling us and they're saying, can I, can I get a book that has transformation stories that can change my life? This is unbelie unbelievable. And so uh, uh, the first day, I think we, we recorded something, we were able to record something like 4,000 calls, 4,000 contacts. It means that you have to deliver the books to 4,000 people mm. if you want to keep up every day. So every day, 4,000 deliveries. And they said, well, we have time. You know, the first day was kind of slow. They didn't get around to delivering. But the next day they had another 4,000 and 5,000 and 6,000. And it just was a snowball. It kept just growing and growing and growing. And finally they said that we, there's, there's no way that we can daily deliver this amount of books and meet this amount of people that want to get the transformation stories and find out how their lives might change. It's not possible. And so it took, it took us three years together with the churches to get, you know, to, to, to treat 350,000 people in the city who wanted a one-on-one, -on -one, a one-on-one -on -one meeting, and they wanted to receive, you know, the, the book, which we call Transformation Stories. And in the Hindi language, of course, this is a, a Hindi book. If you take a look at it, mm. a zoom, if you zoom into it, you'll see that it's not Swedish. This is not the Swedish language. Mm. Uh, if you take a zoom, if there's, if there's somebody there, you can zoom right in. I want you to see it because it's, it's exotic to just take a look at the language. It gives you an idea of what you're up against when you go to another country, another, to another culture. You see that? You can't read it, I can't either. It's not Swedish, it's not Finnish. But these people, there are, there are, there's, uh, there's about 1.2 billion people that will read something like this in their own language and get the message of Jesus. I mean, that's, that's what we call a massive evangelism. It's, it's huge, yeah. and, and that's, I mean, this is the tool that God has given to us to really to reach the big, huge cities uh, yeah. in the world. So, I mean, yeah. by the grace of God, we have really seen it. Uh, Hanno Gant, I think we have insert now for some yeah, for short, uh, some few minutes, and we will take a look yes. at the insert and see uh, directly from mm. India right now. So, uh, now enjoy. Bangalore's time has come. In the month of November 2014, our city will be under siege by the Holy Spirit. This is our chance to see the city experience the power of God's love. From the 1st to the 30th of November, there will be a major media saturation across Bangalore. From buses to autos, trains, holdings, papers, radio, TV, all possible media will carry one message experience the power to change. People who see this announcement or watch the testimonies on TV will be given a toll-free number to call. Volunteers like you and me will receive these calls and speak to people's hearts and collect their contact information. That information will be given to volunteers like us who can go and meet that person and speak one-on-one -on -one and gift them the Power to Change book. And that's it. A new soul is added to the kingdom and to our church. A huge effort is on to produce the testimonies, print the books, set up the call center, and saturate the media. Worldwide, this movement has already swept 70 cities. In India, the Power to Change campaign has impacted Chennai, Hyderabad, and Mumbai more than four lakh desperate people called the toll-free number. Books were sent out. Thousands gave their life to the Lord and joined the church. Now it is Bangalore's turn. Here is what we can do. Pastors need to sign up their church as a part of the movement. Churches can send in testimonies to be included in the media campaign. We need volunteers to pray, man the call center, and go out to meet people with the book. Finally, the church needs to commit to follow up with all the callers over the next one year to continue to harvest souls for the kingdom. This is our chance, Bangalore. Everything is being done to flood the city with the message of hope. We have 30 days of backing and support to catch up with the teeming millions of desperate souls in our city. Without each of us, this would be a wasted campaign. This is probably the only opportunity of this sort we will ever have. 
Welcome back to the studio. And uh, we just saw an uh, insert from India. We're talking about India and Nepal. And we just heard Hanno uh, so excited to talk about India and what God has done in our ministry, in the mission work you have done there. Uh, Kenneth, when you hear this, uh, I mean, this is a huge, massive evangelism. Uh, sometimes, I mean, for a Swede or a Finnish or a Danish people, it can be hard to imagine really that this is true. This has happened and we have, I mean, we have, we're not finished yet. Uh, so what can you say to, the, to our mission friends? I mean, uh, because sometimes it's hard to understand that this has actually happened. Yeah, I, I, I think um, uh, I remember from Mumbai uh, when I was there and I stand together with some of the pastors you mentioned. Mm -hmm. And when we were looking out on this big uh, uh, venue filled with 400 telephones and when we could hear the voice of telephones ringing and 400 people were speaking with people, some of them prayed for people, some were, were crying and you know, so so with their heart involved and the pastors, all of us, our eyes were filled with tears mm. because we understand something we sometimes forget. Mm. Also, as we are so occupied with all the routines and everything to be done. And sometimes in these moments, uh, you can so, so clearly see that out there where we don't know, are people mm. looking f for someone that can reach their hand to them mm. and, and, and lead them and, and, and guide them into light. So I think uh, all of us, also in Scandinavia, I think our, we have problem because we forget that there is so much seeking, so many mm. lost people that are looking for light and hope and future and uh, I think we as pastors with my Indian colleagues I think we get got a revelation and I never want to forget that because we understand mm. that uh, the harvest is ready it is like Jesus told his disciples they were looking for 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 the food mm. when I say please please lift up your eyes mm. the harvest is ready Mm -hmm. And I think now it's time for all of us in the Christian communities to, mm -hmm. to lift the eyes because I believe there is good times ahead if we are faithful to our uh, first calling to bring people into the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. But, but, but mm -hmm. Hanno, yeah. uh, when you, have, um, you were in the front of this, this, uh, this work and you, you saw Mumbai, Really, really touched by the, the power of God. Yes. I, I mean, in your heart, because Mumbai is one of the most biggest cities in the whole world, and you have seen how the massive evangelism yeah. with some strategic and structure, uh, it's, it's possible to, to touch a whole region and a big cities. I mean, in your heart, it's, it seems like for you, nothing is impossible from this and further on, yeah. because uh, it's yeah. about the hearts and it's about to, to maybe to come together and to, to just do it. Yeah, yeah. You know, <clears throat> with a big argument uh, with the pastors in the beginning, before anything happened, we were still in the preparation stage. Pastors would say, <clears throat> if the re if the, if the condition is that we work together with other churches, other denominations, you know, other church mm -hmm. groups. Uh, they said it'll never happen. I mean, it's never happened in our city and it never will happen. I mean, we, the people will say, I can't work with that church. I can't work with this one. I've never worked with that one. It's impossible to work with them. And this is the climate, you know? Mm. And so, <clears throat> and we said, no, we said, no. If you agree on only one thing, and that is that, that you need to make Jesus known to every single person in this city. If you agree on that one point, then you are in. You're inside, you're on the train. I mean, we're, mm. we're in this together. We're, you're in the boat, let's go, let's do it. We're not gonna discuss theology. We're not gonna uh, discuss issues that you think that might be divisive. We're not gonna go that way. We are only interested in bringing Jesus to these people because these people don't care about your theology. They don't care about your disagreements or the viewpoints that you have that might be different from another church. They could care less, they don't. 
All they want to know is if mm. there's if you have a message of hope that for my life that works in my life, you tell me about it now. That's what they want to know. And so, and so then they came together and they forgot the differences. They said, okay, we can agree on this one thing and we can work together. Mm. When the campaign was over, they said, we'll never forget the unity that we have experienced. Yeah, it was sweet. Yeah. It was sweet and we never thought it was possible. We hope it never ends. This is the unity that we need to have. And this is what Jesus was talking about. Yeah. I mean, this is amazing news. And uh, when we hear this, what God has done in, in, in India and also the same in Nepal, but maybe it's another program yeah. because the time is running out. But uh, it's really, uh, it's so exciting to hear because nothing is impossible when God uh, touch our hearts to touch other hearts. So, I mean, uh, maybe we can help other churches uh, in Scandinavia to understand that um, it is possible uh, we have no mega cities in Scandinavia, but we have quite big cities, but it's possible. Uh, sure. Hanno Absolutely. and Kenneth, uh, you will come back later on other new programs, of course. And, and, and uh, I mean, w we have so much to talk about and <laughs> really to encourage people with. Uh, but uh, for now, this program, I just want to say thank you to you, Hanno and Kenneth, for taking your time. Okay. Uh, from the mm. studio in the headquarter in Finland. God bless you and uh, we stand together for a big harvest. Mm. Och uh, till dig som finns med oss i Sverige så vill vi bara säga det att uh, du kan bli en del av det vi tror Gud vill göra fortsättningsvis i uh, Indien. Vi kommer inte sluta, vi kommer att fortsätta. Vi har en hemsida mediepension.se där finns all information du behöver. Och du har möjlighet att ge via den sidan, ta kontakt med oss, sprid vårt arbete. Gå in på vår hem Facebook-sida, Instagram-konto och bli en missionsvän till oss. Så ska vi tillsammans få se hur människors liv blir förvandlade. Mm. Vi vill ge dig det bästa vi kan från vårt arbete från huvudkontoret i IRR TV i Kerava, Finland. Och från Medimission Sverige och det är Guds Välsignelse över dig och ditt liv. Så ses vi nästa vecka. Tack! Mm.